Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft PowerPoint. In this module, I want to show you the best ways to animate your slides. So first of all, I'm going to create a couple of slides. So title slide for this will be the Battle of Waterloo. Control Enter will go down to the next text box. You can put the date in that, 18th of June, 1815. Control Enter will give myself, myself another slide and it defaults to the list bullet list slide it says there click to add title but i don't really need to do that i can just start typing if i just type and it just it automatically goes in there british forces is what i want control enter and then i'll just do a short list wellington picked on and books bridge big people now if i press enter after each one of those i can then press tab and get a sub bullet which i do want and i'll do guards same thing for picton press tab and then oops, bridge. so that's my slide have i'll read now i want to animate it so at the top there you've got transitions which is how one slide changes over to another so what I normally do there is use dissolve. If I go and select dissolve, dissolve that one, and I always select apply to all. So every slide is dissolved in. While I'm here, I might as well just make this look a bit nicer than that. So I'll go for a theme like so. Now to animate this, if I go to the animations tab, you have these animations and a drop down arrow at the end which gives you entrance emphasis exit and motion paths and then with more of each of those listed below now the problem with using these is that if you put a entrance animation on and then want to do emphasis the emphasis animation will overwrite this one so you basically can only put one on at a time if you do it from this drop down list here so what i always recommend people do is activate the animation pane so you can see the list of animations here. So I'll just show you what I mean by that. So if I click on swivel, you get a little preview of that animation coming in. And in this, you get that animation listed there. If I then go pulse, what happens now is they all pulse, but it's replaced the previous animation. Now, even if you open that up, and then click on at the bottom let's click at the bottom back over here i'll go swivel again you can speed this up it still replaces the previous animation so why why this takes up so much space is beyond me because i don't think it's the best use of this the animation pane when you click on it shows you exactly the same animations but using it through this option allows you to lay animations. So if I just delete this one off, first off, get rid of that. Click on the text box to animate it. You don't normally animate the title. And then if I go through here, now I like to do dissolve in as well. So that's not in the list at the top. So down the bottom there, more entrance, and then you can find dissolve in and click OK. Now they're going to dissolve in, but they're all coming in. If I click, I click on the play selected, they all come in as a pair, so it's level one paragraph settings. But if I go into this little drop down arrow at the end there into effect options, now you can get effect options from there, but there's not as many features. What I want to do is select don't dim, so I like to do that. So let's go, let's go pink. So it's black at the minute, it'll go pink after. Text animation is where I'm going to change this to level five paragraphs. It's on level one at the moment. So if there was five indents, there's only two indents or one indent. If there was five, it would bring them in one at a time. I click OK to that and you'll get the preview one at a time. And it's going pink when it's lost focus. That's what I always do. I like it. I'm liking that. Now, if I want to add an, um, an emphasis, let's go for grow and shrink. At the moment, when I click on that, it looks like it's overwritten the previous one, but as you'll see in a second, it has not. It's just added it on. It's just underneath. 
Now, if I open both of these up by clicking these little chevrons, what I want to do is move each one of these. So I click on Wellington, and then I want to move Wellington to the top underneath the green Wellington. And then I want to move guards up, 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 up underneath guards and fit turn, etc., so on and so on. So basically, it goes green and then yellow for each of these like that. So if I click on top one, let's just play from selected so it goes from big, guards comes in, victim comes in, goes big, infantry comes in, goes big. So that's what it's doing like that. I'm happy with that. You can stop that by just clicking there. Now if you want to do, I'll click back over here, if you want to do the exit as well, see what happens here i'll go down to more exits if you like i'll go for dissolve out click ok and again that's done this so i'm going to click on wellington and i'm dragging wellington up after the yellow wellington and then i'm dragging um guards red guards after the yellow guard and then Picton after the yellow Picton, and then infantry after the yellow infantry, and so on and so on. Bridge after Uxbridge, and the cavalry is in the right place. Now, what's what happens? Stop that actually, I should get to the beginning. Play selected. Wellington goes big, disappears. Now, all that went a bit quick. So, what I'm going to do is just stop that for a second because. Let's click on this second one down. It's on click. The, the exit though, click on the exit. That's on click. That's on click. Okay, everything seems to be on click. But sometimes some of these, right, that one there is going with previous. Now, I don't know why it's doing that. It just does that. Some of these, you have to just make sure that it's on click. Otherwise, See, these ones are still on click. It was just that second set that went with previous and, and this one. So it's just random, really, um, because otherwise they'll come on and off and disappear on you really quickly without you even noticing. So I think all the rest are OK. No, they're not. That one, last two, on click. And then that one, on click. If you want to change the delay, if it was on coming with previous, you could put a delay in there. You can also increase the duration of the effect. But now this should work correctly on mouse click. So it's going big, then it disappears. Guards comes in, goes big, disappears, etc., etc. So if I press Escape, stop that. So I'll just click on the screen to stop that, and then put that into full screen and just go through it with my mouse. So Shift F5. There it is in full screen. Click. Talk about Wellington. He's got focus. Click. Grows and shrinks. Disappears. Click. Guards come in. Goes big. Disappears, etc., etc. And you could just click through it like that. I'm just going to press escape to come off that. So using the animation pane, in my view, is the best way to get a layered animation because that's what you've got there. Far superior to going, uh, from going through this lot here even though they look exactly the same. And this used to be docked all the time in older versions of PowerPoint, but for some reason it's not anymore. So therefore people don't necessarily know about it. And then coming through this option is where you get the layers and you've got obviously motion pass down the bottom there as well. So that's all I want to talk about in this little video. So hopefully it's been of use. Thank you for your time and I'll catch you in the next one.